Yes, welcome everybody to this new seminar series um, called Tackling Global Health Challenges. My name's Sassy Molyneux. I'm a social scientist and I'm based in the Health Systems Collaborative Group here in Oxford. And I'm going to be chairing this series and I'm co-chairing it together with Professor Mike English, who's a clinical researcher and an implementation health systems researcher also based in the same group. Um, so we're really delighted over the next four sessions, different seminars, um, to be bringing together speakers from different major research programs. So we're bringing together speakers from the Oxford Centre for Global Health Research and speakers from three different Africa and Asia programs. So these are all large programs um, being run out of um, Thailand in the case of Moru. Vietnam in the case of Okru and Kenya in the case of the Kemri Wellcome Trust program. So really delighted to have speakers from these different contexts and working in these different programs that are linked. So just a bit more background and introduction to the series. So I'm sure everybody here is aware that um, global health problems are very complex problems and um, it's important to have effective research collaborations, both across different sectors, but also different disciplines in order to tackle these complex problems. Um, and effective and creative um, collaborations as a starting point really, need different disciplines to be aware of what each other can bring um, to tackling the problems. So exposure to different fields and disciplines. And what we hope to do over this series is to hear about different methods and approaches that fall under the umbrella of health policy and systems research and to see how they're being brought into um, thinking about and researching different global health challenges. So a little bit more about what health policy and systems research is. There's a commonly used definition on the left-hand side of the screen there, but there are quite a few different definitions. And the important thing to um, take away about the field is that it's characterized largely by the types of methods, not by the types of methods that it employs, but rather by the types of questions that it seeks to answer. Um, and so in health policy and systems research, as the name suggests, is trying to understand about health systems, different elements of health, health systems, how they interact with each other, how they function, and importantly, how health systems might be strengthened. So it's an applied field, very pragmatic in its orientation. Um, and this means, and it takes seriously at the heart of the field, the importance of understanding problems and issues in context. So a big strength of the field is that it brings together different disciplines, different types of knowledge paradigms and research designs and methods. Situating health policy and systems research in other uh, health research traditions, what we can see in this visual is that it um, operates across the individual level and the societal level and that it draws heavily on and incorporates social sciences into the field. And incorporated within the overall umbrella of health policy and systems research are all these different, more specific types of research listed on the left of the slide. Um, and in there is implementation science, implementation research that I'll come back to. So what we are planning to do over this seminar series um, is to um, have an opportunity to talk about a series of different challenges. Tackling AMR is today, so I'll give an overview first of interdisciplinary research, an introduction to that, and then I'll hand over to Ben Cooper, who's going to chair our today session on tackling AMR. And then over the next couple of months, we're going to have at the same time um, on a Thursday, um, a, series, a series of different topics. So one on introducing new technologies, one on ensuring medicine quality, and another on strengthening patient experience and outcomes. So these topics obviously overlap with each other and we hope that the issues, the experience sharing and so on will be very much um, 
cross-cutting across these different sessions. So before I hand over to um, Ben to run the AMR session today, we thought it would be useful perhaps to give an introduction to interdisciplinary research. What is it um, and what are the kinds of opportunities and challenges that we face in conducting interdisciplinary research? And in the next couple of slides, I'm going to draw um, quite heavily on this paper by Yan Ding and colleagues, which was published last year in BMJ Global Health. So drawing on other people's papers um, and thinking, Yan Ding and colleagues talk about uh, the overarching um, term or set of approaches called cross-disciplinary research. And this brings together three different typologies um, of working across different disciplines. And moving across the slide from the left to the right, um, what we're seeing there is disciplines being integrated um, more completely. So increasing integration across different disciplines. So in the multidisciplinary research on the left-hand side, different disciplines or fruits um, are brought together to add breadth, knowledge, and different types of methods to a particular problem. Um, but there is not in this um, typology a cognitive effort or a deliberate um, attempt to integrate the different forms of knowledge and expertise, um, so the different fruits into more of a fruit salad. Um, so in this middle interdisciplinary research, there is much more of a cognitive effort to bring the learning across disciplines together. But the integrity of each discipline and, and its bases is maintained in interdisciplinary research. With transdisciplinary research, there's a deliberate um, effort to transcend the different disciplines to create something new, a new blend um, with the fruits. And the um, hope with this is that it brings extra creativity, new fields of inquiry, new questions that wouldn't emerge from only having um, a merging of the disciplines in the way it does uh, in the other typologies. So this is a rather simplified um, way of distinguishing these different types of cross-disciplinary research. And in practice, there's lots of blurring between them and there's movement even in one project from one type of cross-disciplinary research to another. But it might be helpful for us in this seminar series to be looking for what kind of methods are we seeing, what's their disciplinary base, and what are the opportunities for, and what are we already seeing in terms of the way those disciplines are being integrated. So cross-disciplinary research is an umbrella term covering the three type typologies um, where there's different um, two at least disciplines brought together and combined, sometimes integrated and different concepts, methods and theories are brought, brought together. And this can be done in teams across collaborations and networks or by an individual. So the value of cross-disciplinary research is that um, in tackling complex challenges uh, like global health challenges, um, bringing different disciplines can lead to a more comprehensive understanding, greater innovation, um, and also um, there can be in cross-disciplinary research a good and strengthened ability to be able to translate that knowledge into practice. So to have an influence on policy and practice in ways that address societal challenges, including health. So, an opportunity, but also a challenge in working in a cross-disciplinary team is that often we're working across quite different overarching paradigms or ways of understanding the world, um, of understanding what counts as knowledge. And I'm in this screen here, I've brought together the two dominant different types of um, paradigms that are that feature in many disciplines. And I've, it's, I've put them on a spectrum to show the extremes uh, to make the point. But on the left hand side, we have one of the dominant paradigms, which is a positivist paradigm. And here 
the understanding of the world is that uh, in an extreme, um, putting it in an extreme way, is that there's a single reality that exists out there that's independent of human experience. Uh, and in this paradigm, um, there's an assumption that there can, that reality can be understood with the right methods um, and that the right methods tend to be experimental, quantitative and deductive in the way that they work. And with the researcher in this paradigm, they should largely be absent um, from that reality. So they should be able to examine it in an unbiased way or at least be controlled for. That's very different from an interpretivist paradigm or way of understanding the world. Uh, in this paradigm, the reality itself is understood to be um, very complex, very multi-layered. There are multiple realities and that these are constructed and shift over time and place through people's different experiences and interactions. So a single phenomenon might be interpreted very differently by different people, or even the same person might interpret a phenomenon differently when they move between new contexts. So here, the um, knowledge is about trying to understand this complexity and these um, multiple realities and qualitative inductive approaches seem to be much more appropriate for that. And the researcher is not trying to be controlled for or unbiased, but the researcher is really key in constructing the knowledge um, and their different values, perspectives and, and influences that they bring to that knowledge. It's really important in qualitative interpretivist paradigms to be open about that and recognize it. So just to give an illustration of how that works, for instance, in TB, a more positivist um, paradigm and approach would be to say that TB is caused by TB bacillus and people either know or they don't know the cause of TB. Um, and that's um, a understandable and a, and, um, and a perspective to have. On the other end of this perspective, is that TB is interpreted and experienced very differently by different people in different places, depending on their social locations and also the context in which they're operating. So there are different questions that might be tackled that um, have different underlying um, epistemological assumptions across this spectrum. So even just looking at that example, what we can see is that there's a big opportunity of working um, between and across different disciplines, but it can also be challenging. I'll come back to some of those challenges. So in terms of thinking about the scope of cross-disciplinary research, one way is to think about what are the different disciplines, the different paradigms that are being brought together but also another set of dimensions to think about are also illustrated in this slide. So organizational scope, um, they might be working more within an organization or across sectors. It could be in geographical scale, and it could also be in analytical scope. So the foci of the um, project or piece of research. So I find this visual together with thinking about the different disciplines helpful in terms of thinking about with our different cross-disciplinary research, where do we sit along these dimensions? And it also helps to show how complex um, cross-disciplinary research can be. So moving more specifically to implementation research, I mentioned that this is one um, form of research in the field of health policy and systems research. Um, and it's often um, multidisciplinary, cross-disciplinary. In fact, implementation research actually builds on different research traditions across that spectrum of paradigms that I introduced. And so for that reason, there can be really considerable debate over its scope, the different theories involved and methods and areas of emphases, but a really broad definition is highlighted on this slide uh, and was 
um, in the paper by Theobald et al. in The Lancet. So this is the scientific inquiry into questions concerning implementation. So carrying an attention into effect and in health research, it could be policies, programs, or individual practices. A more specific definition is again, emphasizing the scientific study um, of methods to promote the systematic uptake of a whole range of different types of interventions that have already been proven, but to, um, to systematically uptake them into routine practice uh, in order to improve health. And in this context, it could include a range of different types of influences on patient healthcare professionals uh, and looking at organizational behavior. It could be in a range of different healthcare facilities, healthcare um, provision settings or in communities. What's really important is that the outcome of interest is the measure of delivery as opposed to the health status of the subjects. So both of those definitions and all definitions emphasize um, scientific methods and rigor. And one way to do that is to use different theories and frameworks, either to test, apply, or to build them. Uh, depending on which um, spectrum across the um, uh, different paradigms one might be working from. So this is just one example of a well-known framework for implementation research, uh, and it requests or it um, includes thinking about five different dimensions that should be considered in looking at an intervention and how it fits and shifts in context. And so the intervention characteristics of which there are many different um, elements on the right-hand side of the drawing. At the bottom, the characteristics of individuals involved in the intervention um, and its implementation in context, those who are affected by it, as well as the inner setting, so closer context in which interventions are operating and the broader, more, um, wider context, the socio-political context that influences that more inner setting or inner context, as well as the processes of the intervention and how it functions and shifts over time. And all of these different dimensions are constantly shifting and interacting with each other. So for example, individuals have ag agency and um, they will uh, act in ways that are not necessarily as intended by interventions in ways that are very much shaped by the inner and outer contexts. So in terms of defining um, characteristics for implementation research, um, in that paper that I mentioned earlier um, in The Lancet, there are a whole series of defining characteristics that are down the left-hand side of the slide there. Just to highlight a few that I haven't mentioned yet, um, implementation research should be demand-driven and involve multiple stakeholders as well as multi, be multidisciplinary. And so in being demand-driven, it should be um, being tailored to those who are going to be using and um, needing the information that's being, um, that's being uh, developed through the research or that's being constructed through the research. And so the um, stakeholders who might be involved might well be policymakers, health managers, potential beneficiaries within health systems or within communities. Implementation research should also be real world and real time, so it shouldn't be dealing with imagined ideal world situations, but more like the often messy realities and very complex realities of the real world and findings are often needed in real time in order to make a difference because of the pragmatic orientation of the field. So those are some of the defining characteristics and some of the challenges and trade-offs that the field has are in terms of 
rigor and adherence to um, the methodological requ requirements of different disciplines that are being brought together, often quite time consuming. So balancing this need for rigor against the need to be timely in producing findings and making sure that they're usable. And often the people who want the findings from implementation research want it much faster than researchers can produce it. A second um, trade-off or challenge is about whether the implementation research should be embedded within the system or the organization that's being studied and adapted and learning while um, the implementation is going on, or whether it should be more external and ob objective and able to um, view and learn from outside. Another trade-off is between being very context specific so that the research is really useful in the particular context, really understanding it in depth and detail, uh, and against wider learning and being able to have more generalizable, transferable findings. And this is where the theories and the frameworks can be so important and useful in terms of that wider learning. Another um, trade-off is between, and it's similar to the others, whether the interest is to study and, and maintain fidelity of a particular intervention um, over time. So fidelity being the intervention remaining as it was initially uh, designed and intended um, versus the adaptation and learning over the course of implementation. And some of these trade-offs and where people sit within these trade-offs um, might depend on where they fit on that spectrum that I introduced earlier of the different paradigms and, and the combinations of those different paradigms and how they're brought together. So the really key message about uh, implementation research is that really to do implementation research, one does have to embrace complexity and it's far more than being able to do it with a few interviews. Um, there's a need for rigor, there's a need to incorporate theory and frameworks and to build these and uh, strengthen them. And there's also need for engagement with multiple different players, with researchers, with uh, health managers, policy makers, participants, and across different uh, disciplines. For implementation research and for cross-disciplinary research more generally, there can be a lot of challenges. Um, working across those different paradigms can bring quite big differences and um, the challenge of, of coming together and having shared understandings and outputs um, can be quite big. There can be competition across a research project or program between the different disciplines in terms of where are the resources split, how are, they, how are they split, how fair is it, what are the workloads, who gets credit for the outputs. And the different paradigms can mean that there are quite different understandings of what's, um, what counts as knowledge, what is a measurement, what are the sort of standards around measurement, is it more quantitative, qualitative, um, some of the framing of concepts, for instance, validity, um, often in a more interpretive framework might be thought of more as transferability and trustworthiness. Um, where theory and practice fits um, in the disciplinary backgrounds can also be quite, quite um, different and lead to some uh, debates and challenges of bringing these different perspectives together. So the overall message is that um, cross-disciplinary research across all of these different sort of resources and so on is it can be extremely valuable uh, in knowledge and in translation, but it's also hard. Um, and this paper that I introduced by Yan Ding and colleagues um, is valuable in bringing together different practical actions, ideas for this from the literature for fostering cross-disciplinary research. And they give a whole load of different ideas for academic institutes, research team leaders, uh, research funders and individuals. So if anybody's interested um, 
in this. I think that's a really good paper to read. And the team have also published a whole series of um, shorter learning briefs or materials that are available online. So we can, we can share how to access those resources, resources if anybody's keen to see those. There are also many resources online for implementation research more specifically, so there are practical guides available, um, research toolkits, um, there's uh, online training courses. Um, so lots of opportunities to learn about and um, get more engaged in this more implementation and cross-disciplinary work. So that's an introduction to interdisciplinary research. And what we're really hoping um, for this seminar series is that we'll have an opportunity to be exposed to different methods and approaches um, from health policy and systems research, which um, I've mentioned is itself multidisciplinary and to be able to see how these different um, methods and approaches are drawn into examining different global health challenges. Um, those challenges and the approaches are very much overlapping, but we also just hope it's an opportunity for us all to make new connections and learn about what's happening in different parts of the world. And we really value hearing from all of you on this call about your own examples, resources, insights that we should, we should be accessing and, and learning about. So 